edu. Tiger is our mascot. Lucy, her name is. Okay? The Bernal Golden Tigers. And if you didn't know, Bernal is not the name of a person. Bernal is fire of gold. A-U is gold. Bren is fire. It's combo combined two Latin words. So, refined fire of gold is what you are and will become now that you are pronounced students. Okay? So, we're now. Okay? So, like I am mshotwell at burnow.edu. My student email is mshotwell1 at tiger.burnow.edu. And I have a message there that it should bounce to you and say, you have reached my student email, please email me at my burnow email. Okay? Um, okay. So when you go on this portal, there's a lots of information here, but the main things that you will need are, the one thing I want you to do is this, the non, put this on your to-do list, non-residential orientation. This is a Bernal thing that orients you to the other services at Bernal. We are at a satellite campus but you are still eligible if you want to go up to Gainesville for like the health center. For student services, there is a counseling center. Of course, the library, most of what you'll do in the library is not going up to Bernal, but it's, you know, all digital. So that non-residential orientation kind of tells you about what Bernal, what services are available for you. Okay? And we don't have time in this orientation to go over that. The next three things that are the most important thing is campus web. You will go to this campus web two times per semester. Okay? And I'll go to faculty login, hopefully. Yeah. And you log in, and you can log in to... I have more buttons than you have, but you could log into, say, the class schedule. And you could plug in OT, right? And you can find all of the classes that you might register for. So these are the classes for fall 2014. And these, obviously, I can't add them because I'm not a student. And Tiffany has actually copied you a list of the courses for the fall. You don't need to register yet for the fall. Can you pass those so out for July 28th, though? To avoid a late fee. Is everybody good with that? So to avoid a late fee, you're going to go to this campus web, and you're going to use the handout that Tiffany just gave you. And you're going to register for the classes you need to register for for the fall. We register you for the first semester, and then it's on you the next semester. Mary, yeah. and if there's any outstanding transcripts, that we're going to register you for, for, for summer, but you can't register for fall until those transcripts come. We will have a whole place. Right. right. Keep that in mind, too. And if you don't pay your bill, you'll have a whole place. <laughs> or you haven't done something that admission needs some paperwork on you, we can't really help you until you resolve that issue, okay? All right, so that's Campus Web. You're gonna go there twice a semester usually. You're gonna go there to register in the beginning of the semester, and then right before classes, you're gonna double check your schedule, make sure you register, for everything that's on that class list that we gave you, double check, am I registered for all the right classes? And then at the end of the semester, that's where you go for grades. That is also where you go to do your course evaluations. The faculty here at Bernal, we are a teaching faculty. The faculty get graded based on those course evaluations. I will say, I hope you have the adult maturity to talk to your professors and not just slam them on the course of vows. I mean, 
slam them if you want, but I hope you've tried to talk to the professor before you slam them. Does that make sense? Um, and they actually do get raises based on some of that course evals. So, um, but if you have really deep concerns, don't wait till the course eval. Talk to me, talk to the professor, okay? Um, anyway, so two reasons you need Campus Web are to register, to check your schedule, and then at the end of the semester to check your grades and do the course of apps. Okay? Are we good? Okay. So the next thing on the internet that you need is something called, let me just do email real quick. Email, you all will have a Gmail account, and you'll click this student link over here but I'll click faculty because that's me. And you'll see my email. Um, I have like 7,000 some odd emails. Um, and so you'll click over here. One thing I want to encourage all of you to do is to download to your computer's Gmail Plus. And that's over here. When you, when you get on the Brunel system, your name will pop up and you can download Google Plus email. And that's where you'll have Google Hangout. And Google Hangout is basically like Skype. But the benefit of Google Hangout is that you can share documents over it. You can have like up to, I think, 11 people on a Hangout. So when I taught neuro, I, you know, before the test, everybody's all freaked out. I was like, all right, from six to eight, two nights before the test, you gotta sign up for a time and we'll have a Google Hangout to answer your questions, okay? Or your thesis groups will meet via Google Hangout in the evening, okay? So um, really a great vehicle for your study groups to meet too. Then you don't have to come somewhere local you can meet from your own home and you can share documents that way. Highly recommend it, okay? You can find some other vehicle. The other vehicle that I would recommend is something called Digital Dropbox. Digitaldropbox.com. So, for example, this is one of my Dropboxes and this is one of my thesis groups that I'm working with right now. And these are all the folders in their Dropbox so that they all have things in the same place. Now, you might say, well, why can't you use Google Drive? The reason why is Google Drive screws up the formatting of any document with tables or charts or graphs. So I tend to tell the students, don't use Google Drive. The only advantage of Google Drive is we could all be typing on the same document at once. So if it's just a text document, that's cool for Google Drive. But if it's a document that's any more complicated than just text, if it has a table, a chart, a graph, do it over in digital Dropbox. And save it so everybody in your class or your group, save it with today's date. Because if you don't, if, I'll tell you, it ticks me off when I'm advising a group and I've just read a 20-page paper and they say, oh, you're reading the wrong version. And I was like, oh, I just lost two hours of my life, you know. So really, I don't say that to you, but that's what I think behind the scenes. Well, she doesn't say that to you. No, I don't. <laughs> it's really pretty nice, but that's what I'm thinking. So you don't want me thinking that because I won't be real pleasant. I'll be like, guys, I'm frustrated because I just wasted time reading a document that's an old document, okay? So get in the habit of dating every document you create with your initials at the end of it, okay? That's just good practice in general in the workplace too. So that's Dropbox, okay? Are we good with that? Okay, so let's go back to, so that was your email. You got email that you should check kind of every day. Um, my flip phone friend, you might have a little problem on your flip phone, but okay. Um, get you a tablet, get an iPad. I will say, lately I've been getting frustrated at Mac people, okay? If you have a Mac, if you have an iPad, you need the Office Suite. I'm gonna repeat it. You need the Office Suite, okay? 
okay? So you need to buy whatever so that your Mac talks to my PC. How many Mac pieces do you have? A lot, I knew, yeah, okay? Great, they're wonderful, they're fast, they're powerful. But there is a problem if you are working with pages and I'm working with Microsoft Office and then I, again, spend time reading your thesis document and you're like, oh, well that's in pages, that's why it's all screwed up. I'm like, we just spent two hours formatting it and now I'm looking at something different, okay? So, I'm just saying, buy you the office suite or get it where you get it, okay? Any questions about software? Pretty much you are gonna need a laptop of some sort with the office suite on it, okay? I will tell you, Google Hangouts on iPads do not work, okay? So you need some other vehicle. If an iPad is your only computer, you might need something else. And you know, you could go to Brands Mart or whatever. You know, laptops are two, three hundred bucks. So Mary, do students get a discount or anything on There software? is some academic pricing. If you, you know, if you're buying a Mac, for example, you get like 10% off for academic pricing. Oh. Look at that if you need to update your yeah. software too. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. On pages, you should be able to save it as a dot doc. Are you having problems with that too? Or are they just not, are they saving I don't know, I just have no tolerance for people to tell me, <laughs> oh, I don't know the software. I'm like, oh, I need it in office. And that's all I know, figure it out. Yeah. And I'm not rude about it, but it's like, you, you understand, right? When you were in a group project and somebody doesn't have the same software you have, it's like, ugh, I can't accomplish the task we need to do. So, just saying, okay? Okay, the third thing you need, this is our digital learning platform. It's called Canvas. It, we used to have Blackboard, some of you may have done Canvas or Blackboard or Angel or what was the one that UGA had? Uh, ELC, or whatever. Well, now they have ELC, I don't know what that is. Everybody changes the digital learning platform based on money, probably. So you'll have courses, okay? And your courses will appear when the semester begins. So for example, right now I'm teaching this course. So this is my course. Typically, most of your teachers will try to put a picture of the textbook up front. Because you have like five <laughs> courses. You want to make sure you're in the right class website. So we try to put a picture of the textbook so that you know where you are. Typically, we're going to have the syllabus as the first thing and these things called modules. And the modules are the weeks that we pace you through a class. So module one, introduction to qualitative research. And then usually I'll have, this is what you need to do before class. These are the PowerPoints. I try to narrate all my PowerPoints so that you can listen to it before you come to class. It's not a requirement of the faculty, but it, it allows us to do more stuff on ground if you have looked at those PowerPoints before you get to class, okay? And then usually there's some kind of assignment, um, like here's an assignment, and it has a little A next to it. And the assignments, the teacher will usually have some kind of rubric that they want you, that's how it's gonna be graded, and then you will upload it. Our rule of thumb at for now, typically, is 11.59 p.m. on whatever due date. So, you know, because a lot of you maybe need to come home from class and do the finishing touches on your paper. So typically it's 11.59 p.m. Just somebody needs to double check with the instructors to make sure, and that's kind of our convention. But again, if you're not getting what you need on Canvas, kind of have that dialogue with the teacher. If you're not getting what you need from the teacher, then kind of talk to me. It's like, you know, I kind of use the rule of thumb. If I don't have my stuff up for you 24 hours before class, then I print it out for you, hand out wise. So you have something, okay? 
Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Any questions about your digital learning platform? It won't appear till Monday, May 5th. So don't go looking <coughs> for it. In, you all got a thing from Bernal that like gives you all your digital passwords. And you have like three passwords. You have an email password, you have a Canvas web password, and you have a Canvas password. You can go into the network and change them all to the same thing. I have a question. Yes. Do you know if those passwords will change if you're currently an undergrad for now student? I don't know about us, but we have to change them every semester. We have to change not our email and our campus web, but our network password that allows us to do the Wi-Fi and get into some other systems like the library and all that jazz. And if we don't change them, we're SOL. I would be surprised if it changed. Really, yeah. really surprised. Yeah. So just a little trick. I keep the same password. I shouldn't tell you this, but I keep the same password, but then like I change the, the extension on it. So that I kind of generally know it, and then I use all the special characters. That's all I'm saying. You're not going to get it out of it. Okay? Any, any other questions about those three digital platforms? Email, Campus Web, Canvas. Canvas you'll use every day. Check it every day. Check email every day. Canvas, you're probably just going to use it twice a semester. So you won't, you won't remember that password typically. Okay? All right, Brittany, evaluate. <coughs> professional associations, AOTA is the highest priority. You're going to need to go to the AOTA website member kind of things for foundations. So that one is the most expensive. It's 75 bucks. So do that one and upload that by the first week in the semester and the other two by midterm. We'll just say that. And you can see if you can pay your membership monthly. I don't know if they do that with the student rate or not, but I would inquire if that's of interest to you. I just have mine automatically um, withdrawn every every month. So when you log in, this is what the login screen will look like. You can hide this little thing over here. It just has your calendar if you were to add anything to that, which I typically don't. Um, first and foremost, we're talking about how important it is to keep your contact and your home address updated, which is what this how-to is. Um, follows you step by step. You'll go down to the bottom of your screen and edit, and it brings up all of these fields. So I just want to differentiate while we're here. Home address is the address we will use. So if you put your parents' permanent mailing address, you know, don't get a mix up. Home, where you are while you're here. Um, I already had one question, just to throw it out there. People are already thinking about level two, so many people out of state, out of area. Down here at the bottom, even if you don't know right now what city or anything like that, if you know, oh, I might want to go back to Texas and live with my parents for my level two, you can go in here and put Texas, and as the time gets closer, you know, that year and a half, two years out, we start planning, we can say, okay, let's narrow this down, let's think about what area you want to be in, that kind of thing. So this is your, your go-to. Always, you know, check this, get in the habit, make sure Probably everything at least today. once a semester, Absolutely. kind of just check it and just make, make sure. sure. And I mean, I try to send email reminders, but again, you know, it's just got to keep the professional responsibility, making sure you stay on top of it. Um, this is also where your house your immunizations, so you'll go back to profiles, and I also have instructions step by step on how you'll upload these. And so this is everything 
something that you will kind of, like some of these are a little different, let's do it. All right, like chicken pox. You can either upload your doctor's proof that you had the disease, or you can upload a titer saying you have immunity. I always like to pick on this one, especially with pediatrics, it's one of the first rotations. A lot of those facilities want the proof. They don't want you to just say, oh yeah, I had it when I was five. They and news want. bulletin. Um, if you have had, if you have had the chicken pox, more and more facilities are not using that as just an okay pass. You are probably going to have to have a titer. That's showing in your blood you have immunity. Right. What happens if you don't have access to shot records? You'd have to get a titer for everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, or get the shot again. I don't know that I would want to get immunized if I didn't have to. Well, don't. Yeah. I actually had to do that. Did you? Had yeah. to do it all again. It sucked. <laughs> My pediatric doctor's not even alive anymore. <laughs> I have no uh, the, idea. The, if you go to the health department, they have a registry online. Yeah, I do all my shots at the state. health department, and they're cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. And they're pretty nice, you know. Yeah. They, you might have to wait a little bit. Our burden of proof might be bigger. Yeah, than I would try to get that. Um, try to get whatever the immunization record is that you've got, and let Brittany look at it. Because some facilities trust us and say, as long as you have it, you're good. We don't need it unless we ask for it. Whereas others, no matter what, want me to send them copies of these things regardless. So, and you must them. have immunizations. You must. It's for the protection of, of not only yourself but also the patients. If you don't have immunizations and you are around a patient and you've not been tested, we don't know if you're carrying something or whatever, and you put that patient at risk too. So just FYI. And um, one of, okay. Do you just have to type in the information or do you have to upload it? Yeah, what you do is you will, you put in the date you received it, and um, most things are one time. Some things like your CPR will, will expire, but I'll go in and verify, so that's typically on my end. Or the HEP B is three shots, Yeah, right? it's three yeah. different shots. And so like these little paper clips, you add attachment, and it'll just give you the option to choose your file, which is what I was going to show. This form on the back of the essential functions is one of the easiest ways to know you hit everything. So you look MMR, you know you've had first vaccine, second vaccine, and boom. Chicken pox, your titer date, pet B, your first, second, third shot, or your titer date, and even your uh, tuberculosis skin test is on here. And so you can upload this one time to value if you wanted, maybe under your physical which is up here, and then just put see help form for all the other ones, and I would know to check this and check all those things. And the presumption is that this is available to them in perpetuity. Yes. So you will have your own digital portfolio. I would still scan stuff to my mm. computer or some hard drive in the cloud, you know, that I have these documents. So once you get hold of them, keep them, then you'll have them forever. Yeah, and I mean, if you ever have questions about stuff before you upload it, you can always send it to me and I'll look at it and see if anything's missing or anything like that. Also, you pay a fee for this e-value. And you pay, was it a one-time yeah, fee exactly. for the whole time you're in the right. program? Will you also pay like a lab fee? This is why you have all these lab fees, guys, uh, for malpractice. So you have sort of like, for now has a blanket policy and each student pays a fee. And, that, and that's why there's all you, these fees. Those professional memberships fall down here at the bottom. Like Mary said, you you have a you have a portfolio that you will keep on eValue forever. Um, your login will stay that way. Continuing ad records. Yes. So, so every time you go to a seminar, you scan the sheet in, so that you have this digital portfolio. So God forbid you get sued. You have uh, right now. I have a notebook that I'm in the process of scanning in because I don't have an eValue account <coughs> except as a professor. So maybe in my free time, I'll scan all my continuing ad certificates in. So when does this need to be completed? Um, I'll send you out the email today with your login, or probably in a few days to get all the accounts set up. And I'll reattach all the how-tos you need, and we'll come up with a date for field work just so you have a concrete, and I'll list out everything you need to upload and kind of give you some tips of what it should look like. So for that Um, what I typically say is anytime you put anything on eval, 
about you, email me and let me know you put it there. Just so it's a safety check. It does email me some things get updated, but it's always just getting a good practice of, you know, I did this, can you verify for me or please confirm receipt of this. Just so there's so much communication between so many students, I don't want to miss anything. So. And if you're feeling overwhelmed right now, right now yeah, it's, it's okay. And so uh, are we. we are overwhelmed as well. Um, we're going to repeat this. So if you have a question, because if I'm you, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, am I going to forget one of these really important pieces, correct? Um, I'm going to repeat it at the communication workshop, and you're going to get emails from us. We just want to make sure that you know from the, the get-go to get And we'll have, like, at least once a semester, sort of a mandatory, mandatory fun, lunch and learn, where we'll have a topic, but it'll also be a time to say, hey guys, remember, you gotta register. We, we're trying to avoid sending you a gazillion emails, but we also wanna communicate with you. So we tend to over-communicate. So kind of talk among yourself. What was Charlotte saying in that email, you know? And then somebody in the room will say, oh, well, I called her and I blah, blah, blah. That's where the liaison's gonna come in handy. And the liaison will call me and say, Shawa, everybody is confused about your email about X, Y, and Z. So we're trying to keep the lines open, and we sort of know we're guilty of over-communicating. And we're trying to get better at that, but it's better than not telling you yeah. stuff either. And, mm -hmm. you know, does that make sense? And I expect, e-value is great, but it takes practice, and so every... So you guys are my third cohort. I've helped, you know, get oriented and everything, and I get a ton of emails. And I'm so sorry I keep asking you about e-value, but I expect to get a ton in the beginning. And as you go, you'll figure it out more and more, and you'll get in the habit of it. And it'll just be like second nature to go in and get all this stuff uploaded. Yeah, you know, I do want to say just from a professional point of view, don't apologize before you ask something. You know, we're here. I mean, we're not at your beck and call, but you know, we're here to help you. We're here to serve you. So. You know, don't say, I'm sorry for asking this, or I'm sorry, but this might be a stupid question. Oh, nothing's a stupid question. And you're probably not the only yeah. one having that problem. Yep, That's likely a about 10 other Especially people. Especially with e-value, there's always yep. a few people having the same thing, so it never hurts to ask. Yeah, yeah. All right, other questions? Do y'all have any questions for us before Mary moves on about anything that, that we've said so far? <coughs> I have a question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, well, just some general things that I kind of saw. Um, it said something about C you guys mentioned about CPR. Mm -hmm. When do we have to have the, the certification given to you by? That'll be similar. I'll get it with Janine and the other cohort people. We'll come up with some hard dates, and I'll email you. Like some things may be earlier than others, but that first semester, since you don't have any field work, there's a little bit of time to kind of get all that set up. Okay, and then I guess the same thing goes with the criminal background. With background check, you need to do right away. Oh, okay. With the CPR training, you guys can get together as a cohort. We'll give you the name of a group that we've used locally, and you can actually set up your kind of a group for work, uh, CPR training if you want. Or, or and then they'll need that for the fall. Yeah, so you'll need that. So probably toward the tail end of the summer semester, we'll, you know, we'll kind of talk about it. And if we don't, bug us. Right and say, hey, we want to organize everybody. A field work question. <clears throat> Are you going to accept requests if there's a specific area that we would like to try and Absolutely. Them? Okay. Um, for level twos. Level ones, uh, not so much. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in our communication workshop. Okay. okay. It's a great question. Well, in the stress background checklist, so that's something we go and do ourselves, not through Bernard. Well, it's through Advantage Students, okay. and that's the, the organization that Bernal is a partnership with. And is that in the packet? Yeah, yeah, it's in the cool. packet. Okay. There's also a link on your website to go to it. Yeah. That's where I found it. Yay. Yeah. You've already done it? Yeah. I was desperate. To Overachiever. Great. <laughs> right. You know what? I mean, what's your name? Jessica, we uh -oh. gotta give her a present. So what she needs a solo cup. <laughs> you, when you guys start your classes, you are literally hitting, hitting the road running. You're in full stride. So as much of this as you can get done before you start, great. Um, don't freak out if you don't, but try to get as organized and prepared as you can.
If we were previously Bernalstein's, I assume that our ID stays the same? Or yes. Okay. Yes. And your email. Even if you get married too and you change your name or you get divorced, you still have that old email, which is unfortunate if you get divorced. But. <laughs> certification lasts two years if I was certified with the junior year so it will I won't be certified with a year into it do I have to become recertified oh no you can just upload the one and you're you'll just be a little off filter from the people who, who do it as long as it's, it's the, the right BLS. type oh, yeah, the right. it has to be the right kind of CPR the BLS. Oh. no Red Cross business yeah, yes. no. yeah. yeah. Basic, basic life, life support, support. And there are different BLSs also. Yes, there is. For health care providers. providers. Yep. It has to be health care provider. I'll be sure to be as detailed as much in the email, and then you can feel free, of course, to ask that question. So again, no, you're getting some other, you're going to get some emails. This is just to kind of, kind of tweak your thinking. Any other questions? Oh, and there's also a place in Atlanta. I forget what it's called, but you can look it up on Google. Um, it does Tell me Monday. your name. It does <laughs> Jessica. It does CPR okay. Monday through Friday, um, like eight to nine a.m. So like every day, so it's kind of convenient. Oh, look at her! I love it. I see the liaison in the <laughs> Your advocate. All right. Okay. Um, Nancy, are we waiting on? We have them here. Okay. These are boxer friends. Our brand new <laughs> officers. Brand new officers. Okay, come on. As up. in like the weak officers. Yes. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> weak as in W E E K, not W E E K. Oh, thank you. <laughs> very true, very true. Um, Introduce yeah. yourself. Yeah. Hi, I'm Tamara Harmon. Um, we're both first year students at the Gainesville Day campus, and I'm currently the president. And I'm Annie Lee, and I'm the vice president. <laughs> we don't have a secretary right now, but we're hoping. That will happen eventually. But so we are part of um, Pi Theta Epsilon, which is the National Honor Society for Occupational Therapy. Woo! You should all really want to join because who doesn't want to be a part of an honor society? Um, so we, it, we um, send out applications or kind of invitation, invitations the second semester of your first year. And it, we'll, we'll send out invitations to the top 35% of your class. So that's another incentive. Who doesn't want to be in the top 35% of your class? Um, and so after we send out the invitation, it's not you're not already accepted. After that, you'll have to write an essay and submit an academic essay, an APA professional essay. And then we will grade those with rubrics. And then we'll send out actual invitations for members to be inducted. I think for your cohort, though, um, we were inducted uh, this semester because we began in the fall. So for you guys, since you are beginning the summer, I believe you'll find out in um, fall. Mid-fall, yeah. Mid-fall. Here's some info sheets for you guys. It has our contact information on it as well. Um, so since we're new, we actually haven't developed kind of our plans for the year yet because, like I said, we've only been inducted for a week. <laughs> um, but so last year, um, one of the big things that we remember doing when we were new members of PTE was um, working at the event for the visiting scholar, and we had Dr. Lindy Coster. Um, it was actually this year, just last month. So um, that's something that we probably plan on definitely doing again. And then we have the research symposium at Brown University too. So we kind of contribute to that and work um, this year as like mon moderators. And, um, and it looks really good on your resume. Um, yes. As if you're competing with other new grads, I mm -hmm. think the Pi Theta would give you an edge up. Yeah. You know, with a whole other thing being Right. And so then at graduation, you would get your, you would have the honors cord as well as the pen. So that's always exciting. Everybody's going to know that you're an honors student. Um, so it, it's, if you get, um, if you get accepted, then it would be a total of $75. So it's $55 for the induction fee and then $25 to the membership fee. And you'll pay that online through the National um, uh, Pi Theta Epsilon website. And how much and is the lifetime fee, you know? I think it was like 125 maybe. It's not that much really yeah, much. it's not that much more. At Bernal, um, there's also Phi Kappa Phi, which is an academic honor society as well. Mm -hmm. So you may get invited for that as well, um, because they always ask us for like nominations, and we mm -hmm. always nominate yeah. people. Every yeah, day. and so we can, we can ask your professors too when we're trying to go through the admission and see who we're going to induct for the new members. We can talk to your professors too. 
and see if they have any um, important views that maybe we didn't get from your essay or your application that can co contribute to our, our decision too on who we're going to admit. And one thing, um, I just uh, went, like, so they just had an induction, and the cohort above you, I was like, oh, well, some of you are probably going to be at Pi Theta this evening. And they all looked at me like, huh? And I was like, so I went to Nancy, and I was like, Nancy, we're, nobody in this group was invited, you know, and I was worried about my charges, you know? And um, apparently they were all invited, but nobody, they probably, they thought it was such a big deal to do the essay, but right. I think they didn't do it. That happened as well to our yeah. cohort too. Yeah. Um, only three students, myself, Annie, and we have one other student, got inducted this year. And when, after, after we submitted our applications and were accepted and everything, we were talking to some of our classmates, and they might have seen the email and said, well, I don't have time for this. This yes. is too much work. Delete, because they saw the word essay. It's really not that big of a deal. Yeah. It's a really simple well, essay. Like a page really, so, yeah, exactly. So, so don't be overwhelmed yeah. when you see that, and don't let yeah. it discourage you, because it, it took me for a minute, too. I was like, wow, do I really have time to write an essay? Like, that's what you're thinking. It literally took me, you know, 45 minutes to write this essay. It's not like a research essay or something like that. I think mm -hmm. this year we said, um, what is uh, Pi, or what, what could you contribute to Pi Theta Epsilon, I think. You know, I mean, at this level, that shouldn't be difficult for most of you to write, I think. Uh -huh. So, yeah. um, and we're trying to, me and Annie are both at the Gainesville cohort, so we really want to um, kind of branch out and make sure that Norcross is also being included in everything. So this year we hope to have a meeting two meetings, one at Gainesville and one on Norcross too. Yeah. So also don't feel like just because you're out here at the Norcross campus that, that kind of this isn't for you. We, we want to make it equal. Everything isn't gonna be at the Gainesville campus. Pi Theta is, they've done a really good job of going between campuses and it's right. a great way to meet people in other, yeah. the other platforms. Right, like I know BOTSA has their Gainesville campus and their Norcross campus. So this is it, we're it for the entire Brunel University. So we really need to try to make an effort to get everybody included and feel like everybody, you know, everybody's not making an hour drive every time we want to have a meeting or an event or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they, in the past year, they had an online or a conference call meeting. Right. And we door. did a supper down here, a bring your supper we ate and met together. Mm -hmm. And one president was, we had, I think we had dual, kind of. Mm -hmm. I think Shannon did a lot of work. Shannon was from Gainesville and Jonathan was from they work really hard to pull everybody together so you feel They've part of it. Right. And um, Nancy Fowler is our faculty advisor, so um, you'll probably hear about her a lot if you're getting in the PTE environment. So I'm um, just around to in general. general. <laughs> yeah, because it is a student-led uh, group. Yeah, and we're yeah, really looking, um, being new, we're really looking for people's advice too on what you guys want to see happen also. Um, we're trying to kind of develop some ideas, and we want to just make it fun and interesting. Besides, I mean, the academic and being an honors student and whatnot, like that should be enough in its own, but we also want people to just know about PTE and know that it's not just, I paid my dues and now I'm a member of an honor society and I'm an order like board at graduation. We want it to be much more than that. So hopefully this year we can come together and develop some ideas to make it a little bit more interesting for everybody. Um, and maybe do some more with some scholars, some research scholars and whatnot and things like that too. Just things that are gonna further your career. And, and look at these research and scholar, um, uh, the one like Dr. Koster came. I got to have some one-on-one -on -one time with her. Like that's an opportunity that you're not gonna get very often. So when I graduate, kind of are, I've already got like this network of a really important person in the world of OT. So we're, we're hoping to like present a bunch more opportunities like that for us. Trevor, can you, since you went to conference, can you talk about them, about what was conference like for you as a student? So I just went to conference, and it was my first time, obviously, since I'm a first year. It was really overwhelming, but um, it was pretty neat. You get to see a lot of things that I don't think you would usually see. And who knew that like the OT world was this big? I think there were about 9,000. 8,000? 8, 8, okay. Paid uh, participants. Yeah, that paid. So just imagine. I mean, that's insane. But the conferences are just, they're so broad, there are so many opportunities. You get to meet so many amazing people. I mean, you're gonna learn about all these assessments and all these interventions in class, and you're gonna go to these conferences and meet the people who developed these things. You don't get to do that typically, you know what I mean? So it's an amazing opportunity. And some of the seminars are just like mind-blowing. The first one I went to was, because um, I'm trying to really stay broad about what setting I wanna be in, so I kind of went in with that mentality of conference. So the first seminar I set through was, 
a stem cell transplant for oncology pediatric patients. <laughs> you know, it's just like crazy kind of things that you can go learn about that, like for me, like I get excited about that kind of crazy stuff that, I mean, we're not learning about that in class that's on cool, stem. Right? You know, that's it. so this is gonna be your only opportunity to be, ex to be exposed to certain things like that, so. Really take advantage of that if you can. And, Na and Nashville is a, it's in Nashville next year, so nobody has an excuse financially. It's just the quick drive up. <laughs> and you so. can pay just for one day as well, even. Yeah, I mean, you can get a lot out of a full conference, right. but, you know, if, if money's an issue. But start hitting your family up, saying, hey, don't buy me presents. Give me money to go to a conference. Or right. give me bows. Yeah. <laughs> it's really a good way to get your foot in the door and into research and just kind of like furthering your career in occupational therapy. It's a great way to start, for sure. And Tamara and Annie, can you tell them about what you did before this and what your experience was like? <laughs> I'm <not> gonna... <laughs> you go ahead. Um, before what was before your OT school. Oh, before I got into OT school, I was a health promotion degree. I got my bachelor's at UGA. For any dogs, so, right? Oh, no, one dog. <laughs> oh, you too! Yay! All right, I didn't give her a present. Okay. <laughs> All right, keep talking. Um, so I kind of had an overall foundation of oh, like, um, you know, quality of life and overall just like promoting health. So um, going to occupational therapy is really unique in that you get to carry out uh, specific in interventions as well as sessions with the patient versus health promotion is more of like a general broad area. So I think the reason Dr. Shotwell asked this question is because she is also a veteran, and I'm a Marine Corps veteran. And there's one here, too. Um, oh, what branch? Army. Oh. I'm married to a Marine. So yes, so she's good. married to a Marine. So at conference, every person in her family that she saw and I was near, I don't know if you guys knew, but Dr. Shotwell just got an award at conference. Uh -huh. She got a, a fellowship award. So um, anyways, we had a big celebration for her. So every time a new family would member would come, she's like, come meet the Marine, come meet the Marine. So... <laughs> I spent five years in the Marine Corps after I graduated from high school. Um, I did some schooling while I was in the Marine Corps, and then when I got out, I finished and got my bachelor's in psychology um, from Temple University in Philadelphia. I, I did not know that. Oh I, I knew you were a I knew you were so Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. We we have no prize. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'll just take every door prize that's left because we've got the, okay. like the military. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I had a bit of a change, um, but so a lot of my interest, especially research-based, is toward veterans, too. So that was another good thing about conferences. They had a, a, a couple of seminars um, that were focused toward veterans, so that was pretty neat, too. Oh, yeah. Um, um, I believe there's a booth for the MPCOT, which is obviously something you need to pass, but um, they have at least uh, what I saw on Facebook. I, I didn't have the opportunity to go this year, but I do plan on going in um, this upcoming AOT conference. Mm -hmm. But I believe they have like free resources for you, like exam prep material mm -hmm. and whatnot. So you are getting a lot by attending this conference. One of the second years won a free exam, and I think it's like five or six hundred dollars. Yes. Wow. yes. She won a free exam, so she said, "Well, now I've got my first one paid for, and if I fail, I'm only have to pay for one." <laughs> <laughs> and we all said, "You're not going to fail. It's perfect." But does anybody have any questions about PTE or anything that we can possibly answer? Not yet. Oh. Uh, do you have any extra? Extra. Oh, did you not get a copy? Mm -hmm. I didn't either. Is there any more? I've got one. They came copy. Oh, okay. Here's some more. There's stuff over here. Okay. That should be good. Our contact information is in there, so everything is probably a little overwhelming for you guys right now. I know. And so, but keep the PTE handout in your notebook and go back and look at it in a semester or towards the end of your first semester and really look at it and analyze it. And be, we're happy to answer any questions. We have our emails um, and our phone numbers on there. So give us a call if you have any questions. Um, we really want um, people to be excited about PTE. So I hope that you guys are interested in it and, you know, kind of more aimed toward being a better student, making, I mean, it's not all about the grades, but just kind of putting 100% into it. If you're putting your all into it, then the grades are gonna come and then you are gonna be an honor student, you know? So. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, um, who else was gonna come with your group? I don't know, I'm not I'm Okay, sure. well why don't we let you guys talk? So that you can then be dismissed.
because then they need to do their, you know, get to know each other kind of thing. So come on up. We have two students, Mary Claire and Abby, who are in the cohort above you. So they are North Cross Day students. Tamara and Annie are Gainesville Day students. But so these people will really know what you're going through. And before they talk, are there people in here who are looking for a roommate? Raise your hand. Bye, thank, thank you so you much. Guys. Appreciate it. Is there anybody in here who's looking Possibly. for a roommate? Possibly. Okay. All right. Nobody else. Oh, do, you, do you kind of raise your hand up front? Me? No. no, the girl mm -hmm. next to you? Roommate? No, okay. All right. All right. Well, I know some of you guys did Craigslist or something, didn't you? Oh, that was, no, that was Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. We're not okay. brave enough for that. No. We're not brave enough. No. We also had one in the current no. cohort that did Craigslist and it did not work. So. Yes. In the weekend. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We did Facebook. We got on our Facebook group and met up. Okay. So tell them about yourself. Um, I'm Abby. Um, from. I, Oh, from Iowa. For anybody up here from Iowa? No. Okay. <laughs> um, we, well, I wasn't at orientation last year. I had finals and everything. But we moved here like last May, right before we started class. And how did you I find the other you. groups? Like, there, you, aren't you roommates with some people in the class? Yeah, I'm roommates with Allison. But um, yeah, we had um, one of our members of our cohort made a Facebook group. And it's really nice because we all post on it, but um, and then you could find roommates through it and everything. So that was nice before class started. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mary okay, Claire. Okay, I'm Mary Claire. I'm from Mississippi. Anybody from Mississippi? Originally. Hey. Okay, all right. Um, are you ready? Just do it on your accent. Uh -oh, but yeah. anyways, um, yes. So I moved time. to Georgia the weekend before school started, and I literally knew no one. Um, but I was really happy about it because I wanted to like branch out, meet new people. It's just a new chapter in like my life, so I was like, "This is gonna be great." So, um, <laughs> she was this is gonna be great. So, <laughs> <laughs> at orientation, um, I was like, "Oh my goodness, where am I gonna live?" We spent like three days before like, looking at apartments, freaking out. Yes. Um. Anyway, so I met up with Abby and them, and we all decided to live in Post Brook Haven, which is like ten miles down the road. And there's like a big group of five of us, five or six of us that live in that area. So um, it's really great, especially knowing that like you had that group of girls um, to study with and like lean on. So that's been a really good part. But school in general has been awesome. You're gonna bond. <laughs> yeah, you get really you're gonna, close with your cohort. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna um, cry and you're gonna be on medication. But it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You were not. Okay. Well, I got prescribed a month before because I was like, I'm going to need something to put my mind on the book. Uh-huh. So. Did it help? It helped. Okay. Very much so. All right. Um, so, yeah. So, so, like. So, what advice, you know, now you're almost through, well, you're through your third semester or fourth? Third. Third so semester. So, we started last May. So, yeah. what advice would you give them? Oh, just go with the flow of things. Things change a lot, so you just kind of be flexible. Um, as far as work, I, have, I just nanny on the side, but other than that, it's like, I don't know if you can have a full-time job. I don't know if people There's can. a couple people in your cohort who work a lot of hours. Yeah, I feel like that would be pretty stressful, but hey, if you can do it, right. might as well. But yeah, you just kind of have to go with the flow, because things come up a lot. Just mm -hmm. Meetings so or one thing I have learned is be really flexible. I'm not a flexible person. <laughs> I like to have exactly what I'm doing every single day of the week. Um, but yes. And I tell you, put your calendar in pencil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm not good at that because I like all colored pens. Yeah. But <laughs> anyways, um, I've learned to be very flexible and I've also learned that this is grad school and you can't be whiny to it. And it also has that benefits because like the professors, they they are flexible with your schedule too because they will change due dates and all that. So 
And that's pretty nice too. So. Which sometimes though that has ripple effects. Yeah. And if, if you guys, we try to be collaborative and so people say, oh, can you move that assignment back? And we will, and then you have all this stuff piled up at the end. Yeah. So, you know, some of the teachers realize, no, if I flex, then you're gonna be complaining at the end. So, you know, it's, it's tricky. And what do you do for fun? Like, have you been able to balance, you know, like, do you still do fun stuff? Yeah, our, our apartment has pool parties during the summer. Okay. <laughs> Every Saturday, I hired a DJ last year, so it was I just feel like, yes, awesome. you have to study your butt off, but also, like, to balance out your life, like, you have to have fun. You have to have, like, your meet your you time. I don't know. So yeah. I take the weekends off. Yeah. So I, like, hardcore go at it Monday morning at 7 a.m. all the way to Friday. Then I'm like, okay, my weekends are my me time. Because I feel like if you don't have your you time, then you're just imbalanced, right. not a fun person to be around. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yes, we do have fun. Like you're not going to be crying every week. Other questions you have of them? We're excited to have another cohort here. Uh, <laughs> Not just us, all the time. But that's our fridge. You guys don't know this, okay? Oh. So, well, you all can bring your lunch there, use the microwave, whatever. But you're going to get to pass the broom to them. For cleaning? Yes. And now they will be in charge of cleaning for the next year, and then you'll get to pass the broom to the next group. So yay! <laughs> Your job is done. So the privileges of being upper classmen, right? Okay. Other questions you might have for them? Good question. I'm working right now. I'm like uh, scheduled spots. So how many hours do you work? Just curious for a week. Um, I work Monday, Tuesday, Thursday from about like two to six. Okay. So that's like 12, 15 hours yeah, or something? Yeah, yeah, once in a while on the weekends, just like a Saturday night or something if I'm not doing anything. But I think your Jackie is working almost 40 hours, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she works a lot. A lot. She yes. Like yeah. Full day, Saturday, yeah. Monday, Tuesday. And again, I mean, she's passing. And she spots a president too. So yeah. some people can do it, but what we found, and we have it statistically analyzed, <laughs> but kind of over 20 hours, people start to like suffer a little bit. Mm -hmm. And part of that depends on how organized you are as a person or a student and, and what the nature of your job is yeah. and the flexibility there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm thinking about getting a part-time job, but I was definitely going to wait until at least the first two semesters were over. Yeah. Did you recommend that? Yeah, you? I didn't. I didn't start until like last semester, like halfway through. So okay. I had the first summer semester, which was nice, yeah. just to focus on school. Because our first semester was pretty hard. Yeah, are you guys like That's mostly doing loans to pay for school? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you just kind of not worry about it? Or? <laughs> oh, you want to worry about it? You can't really do anything about it, so yeah. Well, I mean, most of you will leave here and be making 60000 out the gate. You know what I mean? So that's nothing to, you know, sneeze at. But still, it's like, don't live on your loan money if you don't have to. Yeah, yeah. We have a strip club on the side. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we employ most of you. Yes, grad assistants. Just Don't be late. <laughs> And I sometimes will send you announcements too for yeah. job opportunity. A lot of people who have kids with autism need like respite or the mom or dad need just some part-time help to come in. So sometimes those are good opportunities. It's almost like another field work too. Yeah, there's a lot of OT parents on the care.com. Yes. And my, or one of our friends found one. She's like, I, I don't care how far I have to drive, I'm going to go right. handy for you. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. Okay, completely unrelated. Where in Mississippi? Oh, Clarksdale, the Delta. My grandparents live in Indianola. Oh, 
You'll see like the degree of separation is like two people, not six people. <laughs> and so be careful who you talk bad about <laughs> and everything, right? And if you related to Janine Craig, there's like one degree of separation. <laughs> Go figure. All right. Well, we're going to dismiss you guys. We appreciate you coming so much. <laughs> Some of those will be your big six. Um, all right, so we need you guys to get to know each other for about 20 minutes. In your packet, there, uh, attached to the schedule is a bingo sheet, okay? And it looks like this. Next to the schedule. Not that schedule, this schedule. <laughs> for today. There's a sideways, it's on that one. Sideways bingo sheet, okay? And for this little exercise, you need a pen and this sheet of paper. It's attached to today's schedule. It first looks like this. Yeah. Welcome to OT School. Everybody got it? Okay. So the purpose of this is that you leave here today with three new friends. Okay? Who well, you can... You know, you might want to write down something about the person. So you have to find people who meet these criteria and write their name. And the first one to get a bingo, everybody knows what bingo is? One in a row, across, or a diagonal. You got to run up and write your name on the board. Okay? And then you got to call out who you met. Okay? So you get 15 minutes and you got to stand up and move around and meet some friends. Go. Oh.